Okay, yep. We can see okay. it. Okay. Yep. Are we good? Fantastic. Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Sasha Chua, and among other things, I've been putting together a weekly Emacs newsletter called Emacs News. Before I give you a whirlwind tour of what's been going on in the Emacs community since the last conference in 2015, I want to thank Amin because this conference would really not have happened without all his hard work. So, yay, Amin. Okay. So, um, hmm. There are three big things I want to cover today. Over the last four years, a lot of people have come to Emacs. Yes, I am actually trying to do this within Emacs itself. Uh, my drawing sucks at the moment. Let me just load the one I already have. Uh, so lots of people have come to Emacs because of killer apps such as Space Max, Org Mode, and Magit. Emacs itself keeps growing, so with so many new packages and lots of core development, which John Wigley will talk about later. And of course, there's you know other editors out there in the world. There's VS Code and Atom and Vim. Those keep developing, and there's lots of cross pollination with other with other editors. So I'd like to I'd love to ask to uh, ask you to help brainstorm how we could help the Emacs community become even better. Please, please feel free to chat about ideas and suggestions in the Emacs Conf channel on irc.freenode.net or in comments if you're watching this after the conference. So let's go into more detail. Space Max and other Emacs configurations have opened things up for a lot of people who might not have considered Emacs before, especially Vim users. It's so easy to set up key bindings, Emacs VI or hybrid, combinations of packages, and reasonable defaults. We used to advise new users to start with simple configurations instead of copying big chunks because it can be hard to get help when there's so much in your config that might change Emacs' behavior. Now, there are enough people who have Emacs as a starting point that you can probably find someone who can help you if you get stuck. So hooray for Space Max. See, lots of help. As for org mode, org mode started as a simple way to manage tasks and notes, but it's grown into so, so much more. I won't go into much detail, just a quick overview of how things are growing. Lately, there's been a lot of interest in using org mode together with Jekyll or Hugo to publish websites, so you can easily export from there. Uh, the Pandoc tool has been adding support for even more, more org mode markup, so you can convert to and from even more formats. And even GitHub can display org mode files now. So that's pretty cool. So you can have, uh, yeah, you can have all these different features in your, uh, in your org mode files, even on GitHub. People have been busy adding support for embedding even more languages and tools into org mode. The org babble page now lists support for 75 languages. That's a lot. And in addition to those listed on that page, there are about 25 other packages that don't seem to be listed. So more than 100 things you can put into org mode. Of course, embedding Emacs Lisp into org mode is popular. And quite a few people have shared their Emacs configurations through org mode. So it's a great way to learn more about how people use Emacs. People also share their Emacs configs written in straight Emacs Lisp, and that is totally cool too. The awesomeness of org mode seems to be encouraging people to work on accessing it from outside Emacs because naturally people want their to-dos and nodes everywhere. I like using orgsly and Termux and Android, and there's Organize and a bunch of other projects. There's even there are even web-based approaches like CloudMax and Org Web. As for Magit, one of the other killer apps that's bringing lots of people into Emacs, um, it's a great way to work with Git source code repositories. There are a bunch of new tutorials on how to use Magit and quite a lot of new packages. I won't go into the details, but I wanted I just wanted to thank these killer apps for bringing lots of people into the community. Of course, there's so much more to Emacs than just these big packages. Melpa and other package managers have made it so easy to install and try out code. Four years ago, there were about 2,700 packages, 2,700 packages available. Uh, uh, and now I think there are more than 4,500 on Melpa and Elpa and Org. On Melpa, there have been more than 100 million downloads to date. Wow! There are a number of big groups of packages, which you'll see if you start browsing through a through package list. Here's the top 15 by just the number of packages they have. So you can see, you know, there are lots of org related packages, and you know, each one saw, um, you know, there's Helm, there's Flycheck, and so on. Uh, but of course, there are lots of little packages too. Each one solving someone's problem in a way that other people can reuse. Thank you to all those package contributors. 
one of the nifty things that people have been doing with packages is experimenting with different uh, uh, user interface ideas. I love the way things like Ivy and Helm give you different ways to navigate, and Hydra can help you easily define keyboard shortcuts. So if you haven't checked out some of those uh, some of those packages lately, uh, try uh, try uh, try seeing what they can add to your config. And it's a lot easier to learn about those packages and their capabilities thanks to screencasts, blog posts, and videos. Uh, I've got this RSS aggregator at planetemacslife.com. So if you write about Emacs, please let me know so that I can add your feed there. There's also a lot happening on Reddit at uh, reddit.com slash remacs or org mode or planet emacs or space max. So you can find lots of people posting links and discussions there. On the coding side, the rise of language server protocols means better autocompletion and better code analysis tools. Interactive uh, read, evaluate, print loops, or REPLs have gotten better, which can help when you're figuring things out or exploring an idea. People have also been working on being able to access files and services remotely, which is great when you don't have Emacs installed everywhere or you just want to use something that's completely outside of, uh, of Emacs. More and more packages have automated tests and even continuous integration testing with multiple versions of Emacs. Hooray for fewer bugs and more reliable code. If you're curious about this sort of thing, please stick around for the talk, uh, talk later today on continuously checking for quality of your packages. There have been a bunch of other improvements in Emacs core as well. Uh, John Meagley will cover those details in a bit because sometimes all of those details go over my head. <laughs> Uh, so VS Code and Vim and other other editor is quite popular. Uh, there there seems to be some kind of editor renaissance. Lots of new packages copying interesting features from Vim and VS Code, and you also see people figure out how to copy their favorite Emacs things over to all those other editors as well. So. If we look on, for example, the Visual Studio Marketplace, uh, there, you know, the, here are the top five Emacs-inspired plugins. You've got key map-based things, of course, um, but also the, you know, things like the Kill Ring are very popular. Uh, and for the for Vim plugins, these are the five e Emacs-inspired plugins on Vim Awesome. So you've got like, you know, again, command line org mode is, of course, very popular. So. With all the things that people are working on, it's a very exciting time to learn more about Emacs and what it can do. But how can we make it even better? I've got some ideas, but I'm hoping in the in e Emacs Conf channel, you will share even more. I'd love to see people sharing even more source code, more packages, but not just development stuff. You know, if you've got if you've got a tip to share about your workflow or a video you you want to record about a cool package you've come across, that's a great way to it to help other people discover all these little parts of Emacs. You don't have to be an expert; you just have to share what you like. Um, I'd love to see more meetups and conferences. We've got a lot of people meeting in person and now now we're doing these virtual conferences online. That's terrific. And let's, let's look into, you know, expanding our reach as well. It, in terms of, uh, in addition to writing all these blog posts about Emacs, um, imagine if we were using, if we were recording these videos or, or writing these blog posts about the other things we're interested in, programming languages or, or, or running bakeries or whatever. Uh, and then we're just showing how we happen to use Emacs along the way. So that's one of the reasons why we're having this Emacs conference. We've picked a couple of longer talks and lots of lightning talks to show you interesting things. And we hope you'll pick up a few good keywords to search for or projects to check out. So let's go see what's possible. Um, John, next up, John Meagley will tell us about cool stuff in Emacs development.